Hey everybody, it's Lon Saib, and we're taking a look today at an affordable Chromebook from Lenovo. This is their new Flex 3, and this has a laptop functionality along with your usual two-in-one features where you can eventually fold it down into a tablet if you want, but it is running Chrome OS, so you get a very nice laptop interface with Android apps and Linux capabilities. And we are going to take a closer look at this device and what it's all about. But I do want to let you know in the interest of full disclosure, this is on loan from Lenovo. So we're done with this. It goes back to them. All the opinions you're about to hear are my own. No one is paying for this review, nor has anyone reviewed or approved what you're about to see before it was uploaded. So let's get into it now and see what this Chromebook is all about. Now, the price point on this is really targeting the tablet market. It starts at around $349, but you might find it for less depending on where you're looking. The one they sent us is the entry-level model. This has a new Intel N100 processor that actually performs pretty nicely. It has four gigabytes of RAM and 64 gigabytes of eMMC storage. And there might be a few other configuration options that cost a little more, but this one is the starting point. It has a really nice display, a 12.2 inch 1920 by 1200 IPS display uh, with a brightness level of about 300 nits. It is nice and bright. The touchscreen works very well on it, as you can see here. And of course, you can flip things around into tablet mode. And like many modern laptops, this is running with a 16 by 10 aspect ratio display. So you've got a little more screen height than you used to get on laptops of this class for document editing and web browsing and that sort of thing. It's not all that heavy. It comes in at 2.76 pounds or 1.25 kilograms. It is plastic, so it doesn't feel all that premium. Uh, but it's got a nice look to it, a nice texture here on the top of the display lid. Uh, you do have to hold the bottom down to get the screen lifted up. The hinge feels very nice on it. You can see it does push the keyboard up to the user when you do move it down. Uh, and of course, you can flip it around here. The hinge stays put, but it does bounce around a little bit if you're banging on the screen here. But overall, for the price point, it feels pretty nicely put together and relatively solid for a plastic device. There is a 720p webcam on the top. The image quality isn't bad for a 720p camera, so I think this will work well for doing your web conferences and Zoom calls. At the top here, once my uh, mug gets off the screen here, uh, there is a shutter here, a physical one, so you can block the camera lens just by moving this switch over, and that will uh, prevent you from having to put tape on the display to make it more private. Now the keyboard on this feels very nice. It follows your standard Chrome OS layout. You've got nice big keys here that are well spaced. It's very easy to type on. There is no keyboard backlight, nor are there any biometric options. So no fingerprint or facial recognition options to log in with. You can of course set up a pin code if you don't want to have to type your password in every time but it will take a little bit more effort to get into this machine versus some of the higher end ones that have fingerprint readers on them. I like the trackpad quite a bit, especially given the price of the laptop here. It feels very, very nice to operate, so that was good. Uh, there are stereo speakers on here. They're not spectacular, but they're not bad either. They're nice and loud. Uh, certainly for music, you'll probably want to connect up some headphones, but for doing calls and podcasts and stuff, I think it's going to be fine for that activity. Now, there's a good port selection on this device. The charging port is USB Type-C, but this is a full-service Gen 2 USB-C port that can support display output at up to 4K at 60 Hertz, along with 10 gigabit per second USB-C data devices. And of course, it supports power in. So if you've got a docking station, you can use a single cable and get everything you can get out of that port, which is nice to see on one of these entry-level type of machines. You have a full-size USB-A port here. This runs at 5 gigabits per second, so you can plug in keyboards, mice, external hard drives, and that sort of thing there. Here you've got a headphone microphone jack, and then you've got a micro SD card slot. And this is about the only way you can upgrade this machine, because you can't upgrade the storage or the RAM, but you could plug in a micro SD card and expand its storage a little bit if you needed a little more for the road. On the other side here, we have our power switch, a volume rocker, another USB-A port, and check this out, a HDMI port. And what you can do here is plug in video to both the USB-C and the HDMI and drive two 4K 60 Hertz displays like I did a little while ago. 
And in addition to that, the laptop display stays active too. So you can have three independent displays going uh, on this little laptop here, which is pretty impressive. I was able to get a 60 hertz 4K display to work on this HDMI port, even though the specs that they sent me said it was only rated at HDMI 1.4. So it looks like dual 4K 60 is doable here, at least in my testing. And then here you've got a Kensington lock slot that can lock the laptop down on a desk so it doesn't walk away on you. Now, as far as battery life is concerned, I'm getting about eight to 10 hours out of this in my testing. You could probably squeeze a little bit more out of it if you keep the display brightness down and really stick to the basics. So the battery life on here isn't bad. And one of the nice things about the laptop here is that it's completely silent and fanless because this is using one of the power efficient Intel chips that does not require a cooling fan to operate. So let's take a look now and see how this performs. We'll begin with some web browsing using the Chrome browser here. So we'll just pull that up and visit the nasa.gov homepage. And things feel pretty snappy on this. I'm actually very pleased with the responsiveness. Typically on these lower end Intel chips, you feel a little bit of sluggishness as you're moving around, especially at this resolution. But for web browsing, I'm definitely not feeling it here. So they've made a nice improvement uh, to the performance on these low end power efficient chips. And it's very nice to have the option to browse it like a laptop or flip it around into tablet mode here and use it as a nice big 12 inch tablet. The one downside of this machine is that they don't have a pen for it. So it would probably support a capacitive pen, but there's not a specific tablet pen that you might want to use for artwork or something with this. So that's the only thing I see lacking here. But beyond that, uh, it's a very nice web browsing experience. A little bit earlier, we pulled up my YouTube channel and watched a 1080p 60 frames per second video. It was able to play back that video just fine with no drop frames. So I think if you're watching media on this, all should be good. And on the browserbench.org speedometer benchmark test, we got a score of 120. So that is a pretty good score, all things considered, for a fanless low-end Intel processor. And that certainly bests the MediaTek Companio chips that we're starting to see on some other lower cost Chromebooks. So all in, at least from the web browsing side of things, the performance here is very good. Now you can run Android apps on Chromebooks, and of course this device supports that feature as well. You will find a lot of apps that you can download through the Google Play Store and run on here. And what's nice about this thing turning into a tablet is that you can use those apps kind of the way they were intended because this is essentially a touchscreen tablet when you've got it flipped around like this. So some games that only support touch controls might do a little better uh, on this device than they might on just a regular Chromebook that can't flip itself around. You will though encounter some compatibility issues because this is running with Intel hardware and a lot of the games on the App Store are targeting ARM chips that are found on smartphones and on other types of tablets. So for example, I can install Call of Duty Mobile on here, but I often see it crashing before it even loads up. So you will get a couple of those gotchas here and there, but by and large, I think for casual use, the Android apps work pretty well these days. One thing I would caution you on though is Netflix and Amazon Prime Video and other streaming services. The Android version running on these Chromebooks still does not allow you to watch a lot of content in high definition. So for example, Netflix will only go up to standard DVD resolution, not beyond that. So if you're on a Wi-Fi network, I would use the web browser to watch Netflix videos for the best quality and not the Android app. But I did find a lot of the Android games that I ran on this ran quite well. So here's an example. This is a game called Horizon Chase that I've been playing on a bunch of different devices. Runs at a perfect frame rate here. It looks great on the display. As you can see, my Bluetooth Xbox controller is also working well. Uh, so I think you'll find a lot of Android apps that look and play great on this device. And I also tried out some game streaming. It does have a Wi-Fi 6 radio built in. I connected up to the Xbox cloud gaming service a little bit earlier. And as you can see here, it looks and plays great. I didn't see any lag or anything uh, interrupting my connection here. So the machine is very capable uh, when it comes to running casual Android games, but also streaming uh, more advanced games from a gaming computer in your home or through one of these cloud services. And on the Android version of the 3 d Mark Wildlife Benchmark Test, we got a score of 2,259, which is a surprisingly good score. That puts this in line with one of the lower-end i5 chips from a couple of years ago, yet this is 
completely silent and fanless. And I also installed an emulator on here. This is the Dolphin emulator. And we were getting pretty much 30 frames per second here, which for this game is the standard frame rate that it runs at. I don't think you're going to be doing a lot of high-end emulation here, but things like the Dreamcast, uh, many GameCube games like this one, and of course a lot of stuff from the 8 and 16-bit era are going to run very nicely on this hardware. So I think you've got a nicely performing machine here, even though it doesn't have all that much storage and all that much RAM to use. So I think as good as this laptop performs, it would probably perform even better with 8 gigabytes of RAM which would allow it to run in a dual channel memory configuration. So I'm really impressed with what Intel has done here with this next generation of low-end chip. We're seeing some spectacular performance here for a low-end computer. Now another trick that Chromebooks have up their sleeve is Linux compatibility. So you can jump into the terminal here and run your command line apps like my favorite text editor here called Nano, but I can also run graphical applications like LibreOffice. And what's nice about this is that I am actually running this on the Chromebook natively. So I am not putting anything in the cloud here. I can work on a spreadsheet or a word processing document on the computer itself. And there is a ton of open source software available that you can relatively easily install on here and run alongside your Chrome OS browser and the Android apps. The only downside, of course, again, with this machine is it's only got four gigabytes of RAM and a very limited amount of storage. But still, for what it is, I think they've packed a lot of value in here. And if you were looking for kind of a secondary machine that doesn't cost all that much, there's not many compromises here. And it all comes together very, very nicely. So I'm pretty impressed with this little Chromebook. And as many of you know, I'm a big fan of Chrome OS because I am family tech support for a large portion of my family. And I found these to be very low maintenance devices that do a pretty good job keeping themselves up to date. And on the topic of keeping themselves up to date, all Chromebooks come with an expiration date for when they no longer get updates. The date on this one is June of 2031, eight years from the time that I'm shooting this video. When you hit that date, the computer will still work but it won't get any further updates to its operating system, and that includes security updates. And that date is locked in stone. So if you were to buy one of these secondhand five years from now, you'll have three years left before you hit the date. So just be aware of that date for this computer. But overall, a great Chromebook here and one that I would recommend. That's gonna do it for now. Until next time, this is Lon Seibin. Thanks for watching. This channel is brought to you by the Lon.TV supporters, including Gold Level supporters, Brian Parker, Chris Allegretta, Hot Sauce and Video Games, Logic AGR, Tom Albrecht, and Amda Brown. If you want to help the channel, you can by contributing as little as a dollar a month. Head over to lon.tv slash support to learn more. And don't forget to subscribe. Visit lon.tv slash s.